What's up ladies and gents, Tanky230 here, I hope everyone is having a great day, so welcome back to the monthly series, what are you playing this month, where I ask you what you'll be playing in the next 30 or so days. It's February already, and the new year is well underway, you might be wondering how I am, given what I said in the last month's edition, well, I'm doing okay. I started uploading videos again, but not every day, I want to take some time and ease myself into it, but overall I feel like I'm in a better place than last month. I appreciate everyone who's left comments on my videos this past month, you're all amazing, and I will reply to those comments as soon as possible, probably in its own video. So anyway, this month has got a mix of games that might be just right up your alley. This is the February edition, hopefully without any release date mistakes. I still have my copy of Shadow of the Colossus HD version on the PS3, the one that came bundled with Eco as well, and to this day, graphically and gameplay-wise, Shadow of the Colossus looks and still plays pretty good. It would have been cool if Eco got a rework treatment too, but I guess it makes more sense for Shadow of the Colossus 2 because it seemed like it reached more people, maybe resonated more. I mean for me, there was nothing quite like riding your horse in sparse yet beautifully striking environments. Exploring and climbing the forgotten ruins piqued my imagination as I was waiting for the adrenaline surge of finding a colossus. When the music hits, oh man. Each colossus was something to behold, and figuring out how to defeat it was part of the fun even if I did run around aimlessly for a minute wondering what the heck to do. And when a colossus fell, there was triumph, but also a tinge of sadness. It'll be interesting to see how this remake fares. It's out soon, February 6th, for us normal people who don't get the game early. Just doing what we have to do! Our sons! Let's make those smites off your faces! Look me in the eye, Henry. Well, with Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord out there with new footage and updates from the dev, but no concrete release date, anything medieval is gonna get some attention from me. Granted, when Kingdom Come Deliverance announced its Kickstarter three to four years ago, I forgot exactly when, it already did grab my attention because I like the idea. A first person open world realistic RPG that takes place in medieval Europe. Taking this from the game's Kickstarter page, you're a blacksmith that loses everything to war and along the way you can become a knight, rogue, or even bard. The combat system is interesting as the devs state that you're no superhero. You'll need an army backing you up as you participate in huge battles along with one-to-one -one battles. On paper, this looks sweet and the footage shown so far has promise. I'm hoping it can deliver. It's out February 13th. Move! Move! Sir! They're coming! There's no time! Construct the specified facility. Alright, so I didn't participate in the beta for Metal Gear Survive, but admittedly, watching recent footage, it does look like it could be pretty fun with friends. It looks serious and wacky at the same time, and some of the things you can craft look like they could belong and orcs must die. And as many people have said, it's just so weird that this is even part of Metal Gear. I can understand Konami using the name for recognition, and granted, it's a side thing, but it just doesn't feel right. But yeah, if anyone did actually play the beta, let me know what your thoughts are on it. Metal Gear Survive is out February 20th. It's Dynasty Warriors 9. I feel like this series should be on 15 or something. It feels like there's just been so many throughout the years. I still remember when the first game in this series was a fighting game. Anybody remember that? It's crazy to think how it has evolved to what it is now. And you know, I would never have really looked at the Dynasty Warriors series again, but watching Offshot Gaming uploaded on his channel has given me a renewed interest. I like the fact that you can play as so many characters, and apparently this time each with their own ending. But it's the combat that, you know, while it might seem repetitive, it's just fun as heck to cut through thickly gathered troops of enemies with insane attacks. Also, as you can see from the trailer, there seem to be a lot of improvements and additions as well as... Wait, what? They might drop by in their informal clothes? What does that mean? Offshot, what does that mean? Dynasty Warriors 9 is out on the 13th. Alright, on for some quick hits. So The Secret of Ma. This is one of those games I wish I played back in the day if I was into RPGs then, along with Chrono Trigger. 
but I did eventually purchase that on the DS. Honestly, I wish I had a connection to this game. When I saw the remake trailer, all I remembered was the SNES box, but no emotional attachment to the story, the characters, and the world. It would have been more impactful if it was there, but there's a first time for everything, so hopefully this remake can create the magic of the original that so many of my friends have taken part in. It's out February 15th. To stop the evil, the silent ones, and make the world a home again. Alright, so Faye, I think that's how it's pronounced, looks visually sweet. Love the art direction that's based on Nordic lore, and the world just feels alive with all manner of creatures roaming about along with secrets waiting to be explored. It's developed by Zoink under the banner of EA Originals, and I'll be looking forward to learn about Faye's origin while figuring out who the menacing Silent Ones are. It's out February 16th. So with Pask here, I'm getting vibes from Quantic Dream games here, with maybe a little bit of Max Payne and Inception. It's definitely a story-driven experience. He plays a broken man searching for the pieces of his mind, probably in order to find the truth about something. The game is split up into brutal combat and puzzle sequences, as well as action and stealth. Who knows? Could be a sleeper hit. It's out February 23rd. Alright, so I probably wouldn't have put Age of Empires Definitive Edition in here if it weren't for Squawker, since we've been playing Age of Empires 2 HD Edition, which was a prize I won through randomness by Ifrit Overdrive. Thank you. I always like to think I'm decent at RTS games, but my micromanagement skills are pretty bad. But still, I've been having a lot of fun. It's a little weird going backwards from Age of Empires 2, but Age of Empires Definitive Edition looks awesome. The graphical update looks like a smooth transition, and the improvements that all Definitive Editions should strive for are certainly here and welcome. And finally, as always, this last part is reserved for my own thoughts. Like I mentioned at the start, I'm feeling better, but not where I want to be, but still, progress. With PSN having some problems, playing more Monster Hunter has been a bit more elusive, but hopefully that'll get fixed soon so I can continue my Hunter's journey. In random news, I don't know if you all remember, but my favorite game is Panzer Dragoon Saga. It came out on the Saturn in 1998 and was issued a 20th anniversary arrangement soundtrack from Saori Kobayashi. The physical disc arrives in March, but I got the digital version ready to listen to when I can, and it'll probably spur me to possibly do a Let's Play on Panzer Dragoon Saga. We'll see. So with all that behind us, let me turn my head toward you all and ask, what are you playing this month? That's going to be it for this episode. The entire list of games is down in the description below. So if y'all made it this far, thanks for watching. And as always, take care. And thank you 30 out. All right, y'all. Get on, everybody. Keep smiling. Thanks for the support. And I'll see you next month. Thank you.